Hi, this is Sophie. In this video, I would like to show you how to paint a realistic 3D Black Widow spider. I will first demonstrate it on my arm so that you can see all the details really well. And then I will show you a possible placement on the face. But it looks great also in the other areas of the body like the shoulder, the neck or the legs. The really great thing about this design is that you really only need three colors, black, red and white and um, one very thin round brush. So let's get started with a very round black circle, which is the abdomen of the spider, followed by the thorax area that I split in two segments, and you will see why later. I don't make my lines completely straight to give the impressions of the eyes or the fangs at the very top. For the hourglass shape, I switch to red and I first draw two short red lines that are parallel to one another and I connect them forming two small triangular shapes that are mirroring one another. I then switch back to black to color the rest of the abdomen area and the top of the head. For the drop shadows, I'm taking a black pressed powder. If you don't have something like this, you can also use a black or dark gray eyeshadow. It's important to do the drop shadows of the body at this point because the legs are going to come over it and it is placed on the right side of the spider going towards the outside. Try to work in layers, the darkest being the closest to the body of the animal and getting lighter and lighter as it comes out and slowly fades into the background. The shape of the drop shadow should actually mirror the shape of the body itself, so it should be also rounded. And don't forget to add a little bit of shadow next to the head. At the end, you can use your finger to blend really well and make the edges almost invisible. The placement of the legs is the trickiest part of this design, but watch closely. After you do it once, you will realize that it's actually not that difficult. I'm going to place very, very thin dots where each leg touches the surface, and this is my way of knowing where to place them. For the first one, I estimate in my head the complete height of the body, abdomen plus thorax. Then I duplicate this height going towards the top, then I go one centimeter towards the left and place the first dot right there. So again, one full length going towards the top, then one centimeter left, and there it is. For the second one, I duplicate mentally the width of the abdomen going towards the right this time. Then I go up in a straight line all the way to align horizontally that dot with the first one that I just did. For the third one, I estimate one height of the abdomen going towards the bottom. Then I go right and I align this dot vertically with dot number two, which is all the way up there. I now imagine a diagonal line going from dot number two to the head of the animal. And about two centimeters down that line is where I place dot number four. The next one is gonna be aligned vertically with number four and is at the level of the top of the abdomen. For number six, I estimate one width of the head going towards the left and a little bit above that is where I place it. Number seven is easy. It's right next to the bottom left of the abdomen. I now imagine a diagonal line going down and starting at the lowest point of the body of the animal. This is where dot number 8 is, aligned vertically with the one I did previously. So you see, placing the dots is just a matter of estimating width and length. But don't worry, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. There is obviously more than one placement possible for the legs. But just quickly for you, here's a recap of where my dots are being placed right now. Let's draw the legs now. I'm going to start with the one at the very top right. The leg of the spider has seven segments, but I'm only going to do three to keep it more simple. And I'm going to add a few more dots to show you exactly the shape of each leg. The shape of the first leg is going to be slightly curved, like I'm showing right now, and it's going to be attached to the head of the spider. The first segment of the leg is the longest. That's why I place my first guiding point over here. As you can see, it's aligned horizontally with dot number two. The second and third segments of the legs are just about as long. That's why I place my second dot over here. And now all I need to do is connect the dots. The first and second segments of the legs are thicker at the joints. They look like teardrops. The third segment is, however, just a very thin line. Look how I place the dots for this leg. The first and the second segments are straight. The third one is slightly curved. The next one is slightly different. It looks like an upside down letter V. And the first segment is clearly thicker than the rest. 
The little dots are helpful at the beginning, but eventually you won't need them anymore because you will know already in your head what each leg is supposed to look like. Look here. The third segment of the leg is not straight, but strongly curved towards the inside. For the next one, place your little dots in a triangular shape so that you get a leg in the end that looks something like this. The last two legs share a common first section, which is going to be thicker. Don't forget, each leg is attached to the head thorax area, never to the abdomen. And now you can start to see how all these connected dots are creating a complex set of legs that gives the impression that the spider is truly standing on top of my skin. And I will accentuate this effect even more now by adding drop shadows to the legs. And to do so, I will use again my black pressed powder. I will always start at the end of each leg because um, this is where the line is going to be the darkest, considering that this is where the leg of the spider is touching the surface and therefore is the closest to it. Each shadow line is directed towards the head of the spider and try to think of it as a mirror reflection of the leg situated directly above it. And I just realized that I forgot to paint in red the area between the thorax and the abdomen. Um, so I'm doing this real quick. The widow spiders don't actually have that, but I think it's a good way to separate these two body parts and make them very distinct from one another. And we've now come to the very last step of this design, which is adding highlights in white. The only thing to be careful about is to have a brush which is almost dry. The biggest highlight is placed uh, on the upper abdomen area right above the red marking and it is slowly fading towards the side of the body in a rounded shape. I now add tiny little dots on the face to highlight the placement of the eyes as well as on some of the articulations of the legs thinking about where the light would be reflecting. Again, be very careful with these white highlights because if they're too strong, you will make your design look um, very cartoonish and not realistic at all. So this is the final result. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, it is challenging the first time, but it does get easier after you've done it a couple of times. Um, it's actually a lot of fun to paint and it's even more fun to experience the reaction of people when they see it. And this is how I usually place the spider on the face. I usually put the body in the middle of the cheek with the top of the abdomen being right under the cheekbone. One of the top upper leg will be on the side of the nose and the other one above the corner of the eye. This is gonna go fast now because uh, you've already followed all the steps and there are really no difference when you paint this design on the face. The only thing you want to be careful about is not to make the body too huge. Otherwise, um, the legs around it will be too spread out on the side of the face and in the end, it will not look very realistic. I'm anyway painting this way out of scale because the Black Widow Spider in real life only measures 4 centimeters or 1.5 inches. But if I did paint it according to its original dimensions, it would be very difficult to paint the tiny details like the legs, for example, and it wouldn't have the bold and scary effect um, that I'm looking for. Take your time in the end uh, with the shadows and the highlights because these are really the elements that emphasize the three-dimensional effect and bring the spider to life. So this video turned out to be quite long. Thank you very much for watching it until the end. I hope that it was helpful to you and I can tell you that this design is not only popular with the kids but also with the adults, especially around Halloween time. So I wish you a wonderful day and see you around next time for another tutorial. Bye!